When we made plans to talk with Michael Carita about his new horror novel, Where They Wait, written under his pseudonym, Scott Carson, he suggested we do the interview in a cemetery. Excellent idea. A spooky setting for a chilling book. But when we met, it was a spectacular fall day, and the cemetery, rather than having an air of menace about it, looked like something out of a travel magazine. I mean, fog would have been ideal. You know, I thought this morning we might, we might have some nice fog, but one of the lessons of the book here is that terrible things happen in beautiful places, so I'll try to lean into the, uh, the bucolic setting here. Well, and actually, as I was thinking about this conversation, it occurred to me that what you do every day is you wake up in a nice house, you probably go downstairs, make yourself a great cup of coffee, um, you know, take it easy, come into town, maybe run a few errands, and then sit down and get to work. So how do you make that shift? How do you go from your everyday life with all the good stuff that's in it to a world where you're creating horror and suspense? You underestimate my mind. I mean, when I'm going to get the coffee, I'm usually already thinking about something terrible. You know, that's... That's the job, but no, in all seriousness, it's a, it's a great question because um, in my experience, horror and suspense writers tend to be actually pretty lighthearted and funny people, so I think we're getting our demons out on the page. Carita likes to go for a walk before sitting down to write. This cemetery is actually one of his favorite places to stroll. There are a few reasons for that. One, it's quiet, and two, it's a really good reminder of the fact that I'm surrounded by stories. You know, one of the questions we always get, authors always get at events, it's where do you get your ideas? And we're surrounded by all of these you know, lives that were lived and everyone has their own stories. In a cemetery, the stories are all around. Mount McGuntacook is back there where we had one of the more bizarre murder attempts in recent years in Midcoast, Maine. So, I mean, the idea of bad things happening in pretty places is, is pretty omnipresent. And one of the things I really like about a small town and a beautiful town as a writer is that ability to draw on the intimacy of the place and the claustrophobia, which I think when you're writing suspense, th those things intertwine very nicely. You mentioned a moment ago some of the landmarks around here that you like to use. So let me refer to page 10 in the book and a line that uh, immediately jumped out at me. It says, quote, she had been hiking alone in the Camden Hills on a favorite trail along Mount McGuntacook. That's right up there. There we go. Even, you don't even have to work to do this, do you? <laughs> it's that easy when you're here. That's the great thing about Maine. I mean, there is inspiration all around you. You sold your first book when you were how old? I sold it when I was 20. It was published when I was 21. And this book is number what for you? This is number 17, I believe. So. So there's that double-edged sword. You presumably get better at your craft. It comes a little easier. But on the other hand, it gets tough to compete with yourself and come up with fresh ideas. Do you find that a challenge, or are you just a fountain of, of new plots and characters, and you've always got ideas? Um, I've always got ideas. Whether they're good ideas is the question, and that I'm, you know, I'm less sure of that. But you, you phrased it perfectly. You are competing with yourself, and you never want to be repeating yourself. And I think one of the things I found energizing about trying the pseudonym was that it kind of gave me a, a sense of something new. You know, my wife laughs at that because I'm doing the exact same thing. So it's like, what, what's really new about this? And yet you can kind of fool yourself into thinking um, it's, it's a fresh start in some ways. Carita, who was a professional skeptic when he worked for a private investigator and as a newspaper reporter, says for him, it's crucial when writing horror fiction to make it believable. So I want believable characters, a setting you know, all of those elements of real life to come through and then layer in the weird thing. I've been lucky enough over the years to talk to hundreds and hundreds of writers, many of them from Maine. I have never interviewed one before who was wearing a Maine turnpike hat. I am so glad you noticed. Okay, so this is, it's both a key setting and where they wait. And then, um, you know, my wife is, this is her alma mater. She, uh, she worked at the York Toll when she was in grad school during the summers. And my mother-in-law worked um, for the turnpike for, uh, decades, so uh, more successfully than, um, than my wife, who I think her most famous moment was spilling possibly thousands of dollars in change on one busy summer day. But yeah, that's, that's why I'm wearing the hat, a little family loyalty. 